All right, guys, you're at the end of your chest workout and you're looking for a great exercise to finish it off. And you really want to activate as much muscle fiber as possible. One of my favorite exercises to go to is a cable chest fly. But there are some things you want to keep in mind when doing this exercise to make sure that you're actually targeting your chest. A lot of the times what happens is when we get to the chest fly, it's towards the end of the workout, we try to put on a little more weight than we can handle and it starts to become an exercise targeting a bit more triceps and activating your shoulders more than actually targeting and isolating the chest. So let's go over a few things to keep in mind when doing the exercise. So whether you're starting from the top, middle, or the bottom, you want to keep all these things in mind, but we'll go through all three ranges. If you're starting from the top, number one, you want to make sure you don't put the cables too high. You don't want to put your shoulders in a compromised position where you can't even target your chest to begin with. So find the right height. Once you get the cables in the right height, what you want to do is make sure you take a step forward so that the weight stack never touches itself, even when in the back position. And then from here, I like to put one foot forward, go on my back toe with my back foot, but you don't want to have your shoulders rolled over like this. This is a huge red flag, and I always see people get into position, and they roll their shoulders forward, and then they start doing this. And if you notice, you're going to feel a lot of activation throughout your traps and shoulders instead of where it's supposed to be, which is your chest. You can't even see my chest right now. It's buried underneath my shoulders. So what you want to do is get your cables, stick your chest up, and then roll your shoulders back and pack them together. So you retract your scapula. From this position, it should be very clear that when you bring your arms together, just like this, that you're isolating and working your chest. You should, if there's a mirror in front of you, which I have a mirror in front of me, you should be able to see your chest pop, you should be able to see it squeeze, and you should be able to see right in the top, right through here, all the activation going on in your chest, okay? And as you come back, you wanna make sure you're keeping your shoulders packed, keeping them down, and not letting your shoulders rise up to your ears. So, when you get into position here, don't do this, don't lean forward. And a lot of times people lean forward because the weight's too heavy and it's pulling them back. Even if the weight's a little heavy and, and it's too heavy for you to stand up right, you can still rotate your shoulders backwards, pack them, and then just get lower and get a lower center of gravity like this to compensate for the weight. But obviously you'd have to lower the handles as well. So that's for the high chest fly. For the low chest fly, or the, the middle chest fly, I like to place the cables just a little bit under my chest to do this exercise. So, yeah, that was good, just like that. From here, same thing. And it's a lot easier when doing this exercise to make sure you're keeping your shoulders down and back because you're not putting yourself in a compromised position because the cables are already lower. But when doing this exercise, you wanna make sure that as you bring the weight and the handles close to each other, you're maintaining a slight bend in your elbows, shoulders are down and back, and you can feel your chest squeezing the entire time, okay? Just like this. Squeeze your chest as hard as you can on every single repetition. Now what often happens on all three versions of this exercise is if the weight is too heavy, You'll start off with good intentions, and your intentions are to work your chest, and you'll start off with a slight bend in your elbow. And what you'll start to see happen as you start to fatigue, and it gets heavier and heavier, your hands get closer and closer together. And then you're not really targeting your chest that much anymore. To really focus and isolate and target your chest in all three versions, you need to make sure that you're squeezing, keeping a slight bend in your elbow, and you're really able to contract your chest as hard as you can. And you can't do that like this. Look at the difference between how close my arms are to my chest when I'm here versus here. So there's a lot more range of motion when you're coming all the way out in front of you like this versus using weight that's too heavy and only going to here, okay? It's like cutting the range of motion in half. Now, the last exercise is the low cable chest fly. So for this one, you're gonna have to just find what works for you. And once you're into position with this exercise, and granted, you can use momentum on any of these versions, but you see it most often used here, and it's something you wanna stay away from. Every single exercise you do, if you wanna isolate and target your chest, and you wanna feel as much muscle activation as possible, you need to be able to use weight that you can handle and control the positive and negative portion of the repetition. So when you're doing low cable chest flies, Take a step forward, follow the same rules. Don't be like this, don't be leaning forward. Lean back, chest up, shoulders retracted. 
And then from here, with again, with a slight bend in your elbow, come up as high as you can and really feel that chest contract. Now again, if you don't keep a slight bend and you bend your arms too much and you start doing this, you're taking all the range of motion out of the exercise and you're losing a lot of muscle activation in your chest when you do this. And the other bad thing is, if it's too heavy and you find yourself going like this and then just dropping it and every rep is a little bounce like this, that's not good because you're using momentum and not your actual muscles to perform the exercise. So cool, your mechanical strength is going up, but you're not building any muscle because you're not breaking any down. So you need to make sure that you stand nice and tall. I always like to squeeze the handles as hard as possible and then come up, come down, control the weight and repeat for reps, shoulders down and scapula retracted the entire time. So today guys have it. If you're looking for an amazing finisher and a great exercise to really finish off your chest, you can do all three of these versions. You can just pick one of them. Do whatever you want to do. Superset them together. Whatever destroys your chest the most. Typically when I do this, I do three to four sets of 10 to 12 repetitions per set. So, hope you guys enjoyed that. And if you like making natty gains and you're all about working hard in the gym and pushing yourself to the limit, join the Natty Nation over at MuscularStrength.com. And as always, more good stuff coming soon. See you guys. If you're looking for a website that lets you build your own profile, interact with other community members, log your daily meal plan and add your own custom foods, find the exact routines you're looking for to reach your goals on a weekly basis, new recipe ideas to help improve your meal plan, and you enjoy learning new things to take your workouts to the next level, join MuscularStrength.com. What's your maximum output?